Hi everyone. I am Dr. Mahindra, Professor of ECE, MLR Institute of Technology, Hyderabad, India. Today I am going to give you a session on design and verification of digital systems on field programmable gate arrays, that is FEGA. Hereafter I will uh, speak this field programmable gate array as FEGA. Now let us uh, look at the outlines of our session. Now in this session, first I am going to give you background of VLS design flow and implementation styles and definition of FEGA, need and history of FEGA, and then basic architecture of FEGA, parallel computing through FEGA, and then system design and implementation process through FEGA. Design system design with an, with an example, that is adder design I have taken as an example, and we will be studying how to design adder by using this system design and implementation process on FEGA. Next, Xilinx FEGA device families. There are various FEGAs available for implementation. Here we will be discussing about what are various FEGA devices available for implementing digital systems. And then finally, applications and challenges of FEGA nowadays. Now let us start with VLS design flow. Here we could see the diagram showing the various abstraction levels of VLS design flow, starting from high level to lower level. That means in high level, you can call that as top level and lower level can be called as bottom level. Now, if you see here at the lower level, we can see the devices. Now here we can manufacture the VLS. VLS stands for very large scale integrated circuit. OK, this here this VLS design can be made by using the devices. That's why at the lower level, there are devices here. I, uh, here you can see only FET transistor, but there are many more transistors and many more devices. This can be used for designing VLS ICs. Next level is circuit level. Here we can interconnect all these devices as circuit. That's why this second level is circuit level. Design. Third one, third abstraction level is gate level. These circuits are interconnected together and can be formed as one logic gate. Now we know there are many logic gates that is and now and not nor there are logic gates. We can design those logic gates by using the transistors. And then we can interconnect those logic gates to design modules, modules such as adders, multipliers, registers, counters. These are the modules. We can design those modules by using logic gates. And then finally, we can interconnect all those modules to get final system. Now, this is system is the top level module and the device is the lower level module. Now we can follow any method. That means we can start from the devices and then we can reach the system. Otherwise, we can start from the system and then we can design internal modules and then gates, then circuits, and finally devices. Now, this is the VLS design flow. It will be having two flows that is uh, top to bottom as a well bottom to top. We, uh, design engineer can follow any one of the methods to get design the efficient integrated circuits for real time applications. Now, let us uh, see the various systems are various uh, system designs at various abstraction levels. Now uh, I spoke about the five abstraction levels. Here you could see the diagram. In the diagram, we have the systems in various abstraction levels. Now look at this first abstraction level, that is bottom abstraction level. Here you could see the bipolar transistor, then FET, and then devices. These are the devices what widely we can use to design the integrated circuits. Next is circuit. That means whatever device we have designed in a lower level model, we can interconnect them as circuit. Now in circuit, we could see here, there are circuits by using BJTs, there are circuits by using FET transistors, there are circuits by using transistors, diodes, and then resistors, okay? Now we can design any type of circuit, but that circuit should satisfy our requirement. That means simply I can say that we can design the circuits for the system behavior. And then we, convert that circuits into the gate level matrix, gate level design. Now here you could see various gates. That is here you can see the buffers, inverters, then uh, flip-flops, multi uh, multiplexers, then gates, logic gates, then full ladder. These are the logic gates, what we can uh, design by using the circuits. After designing the logic gates, we can interconnect those logic gates in order to get modules. At the module level, we can see here combination circuits that is Summation indicates this uh, add addition adder. Then uh, this symbol indicates the multipliers. Right? Then a sequential circuit that is registers, memories. There are many more, but these are the basic gates 
which can be placed in the module level. We can use these gates and then we can develop some complex modules also. And then these modules are interconnected together to get the final system. Now here you can see there are uh, microprocessors, DRAM, SRAM, then uh, controller chips, modem chips, ACEP. These are the systems which are uh, designed by interconnecting modules. Now this is how that VLSA design flow starts. That means either from bottom to top or top to, top to bottom. Now let us uh, look at various design styles. Now here there are uh, three design styles. Mostly we follow to design the VLSA systems. Now here if you look at the left hand side, there is full custom ASIC. Here ASIC stands for application specific integrated circuit. Then semi-custom semi ASIC, then user programmable devices. Under user programmable devices, we have two devices that is PLD, programmable logic devices, as well FEGS, that is field programmable gate array. Now we'll be speaking about various abstraction, various design styles of VLSI. Now we will look at this uh, full custom ASIC design style. Here you could see the layer diagram. Now this is the layer diagram. Here we will have the P layer, N layer, which are mostly used for designing the transistors. As I said, that uh, at the bottom level, there is uh, devices. The devices will be manufactured by using P-type and type substrates. We can put those P-type and type substrates as layers, and we can uh, design the devices. And then we use those devices to, uh, to design the circuits. And then these circuits are used for designing gates, then gates to modules, and then finally system. This is how this full custom ASIC design flow starts here if you look at this uh, full custom ASIC design flow the design is the designing of VLS systems is starting from device to the system that's how that full custom starting from device level to system level now this is the full custom ASIC flow but it is having advantages as well disadvantages if you follow this full custom design flow we will uh, have Use time to market. That means there is uh, more time required to release the product into the market, as well high NRE cost here, non-recurring engineering cost. NRE stands non-recurring engineering cost. That means salaries what we pay for the design engineers as well some other products. Actually, this is actually non-engineering cost is very high if you go for full custom asset design. And then high production cost since NRE cost is very high production cost of the design also very high. That's, these are the drawbacks. It is not exactly drawback, but these are the uh, things what the design in, design engineer or design company have to bear. But here they can get the advantage that is, this is most efficient among all other design styles. That means in terms of speed, actually whatever uh, system we design by using full custom design flow, that will have very high speed as well that will have optimized in the area as well power consumption will be very less nowadays most of the people look for high speed devices but we can achieve all those things if we follow the full custom asset design flow but here drawback is we can have high nre cost as well time to market is very high now let us move to the next uh, design style that is semi-custom asset design style here you could see the diagram here uh, the semi-custom as it starts in different way, not like uh, full custom design. In full custom design, we have started from the device and then uh, uh, transistor level from transistor to gate level, gate to module, and then finally system. But here, there will be a two-step skip. That means there is no device and transistor levels. See here, this is the flow what we can follow to design the VLSI systems by using semi-custom ASIC design flow. Now, if you look at this first step is specifications. Here, we can capture the specifications of a design. Let us assume if I want to design the adder. Adder will have many specifications. That means number of input, number of outputs, then behavior of the adder. All these things are comes under the specifications. We have to capture the specifications. After capturing the specifications, we can keep them in terms of high-level description. High-level description is here. We can use high-level language programming language to design the uh, chips. That means we can keep the specifications of the system in terms of high level language. And then we can uh, uh, convert that to the functional description and then logic description. After this logic description, we can uh, send that 
logic description to the synthesis process. Under synthesis process, there will be a technology will map. That means here technology means we can manufacture the ICs by using 65 nanometer technology as well as 45 nanometer technology. I hope all of you know about what is 65 nanometer technology as well as uh, 45 nanometer technology. Now research is going on in uh, 12 nanometer technology also. But here we can uh, take any technology mapping library and then we can convert this logic description into the gate level design. Now after conversion of this logic description to the gate level description, we will have the behavior of the system in terms of logic gates. You could see here just I kept some gates here. We will have the behavior of the system in terms of logic gates. And then we can uh, send this to the physical design. In the physical design what we do is uh, we place all these gates in the manufacturable area of die this is the man uh, manufacturing die okay we can place all these gates on the area of the manufacturing die and then we can send it for fabrication process at the fabrication process that ic will be fabricated here if you look at this design flow there is no level of device as well circuit the, those two levels are skipped here there will be a logic gates already available in technology mapping library and those technology mapping libraries are we are using for designing the integrated circuit. That's why he semi custom. Here we are not following a total five step, five levels. Here we are following only three levels. First two levels are kept in the form of technology mapping library, and those technology mapping libraries provide as the gate level netlist. That gate level netlist will be placed on the uh, manufacturable area, and then that can be manufactured. That is fabricated by fabrication industry. But here there are advantages that is a short time to market as compared to the full custom design here there are two levels of decrease that's why there will be a less time to release the product into the market as well still there is high NRA cost because of here in physical design there is need of more design engineers to place the gates in the proper places and then providing the routing between them there there will be a more number of design engineers required that's why more NRA cost. But here, uh, that performance is not very optimized as the full custom design, but here fairly optimized in terms of area, power, and timing. As compared to the full custom design, here this performance will be less, but uh, time to market is very less. That is short time to market. That is uh, one other advantage why because we have to release the products into the market as early as possible, then only we can capture the market. Otherwise, uh, there will be a big loss for the industry. That's why this is the flow can be used for designing integrated circuits quickly next there is another way of designing integrated circuits that is by using user programmable devices as i said there are two kinds of user programmable devices that is uh, programmable logic devices as well field programmable gate arrays now if you look at the programmable logic devices there are three devices available that is rom that is read only memory programmable logic array and programmable array logic. These are the three devices available for implementing the VLSS circuits on PLDs. Okay. Now here if you look at the read-only memory, here we have the R plane. R plane means there are R gates put up and we have to reprogram the R gates to get the desired functionality of a system. But here uh, since we are doing R programming, that means the R gates are programmable, there will be a more area consumption. There will be more area consumption because there are fixed number of R gates available. But we may not use all the R gates effectively for designing the system. That's why there is a loss of area. That is what we can call area consumption is very high if we go for using read-only memories. Then there is another device that is a programmable logic array. In programmable logic array, we have the plane that is having programmable and as well programmable R. That means here we have to do programming at the end level as well programming at the R level. That's why it is uh, providing more delay. That's why there are two level programming is required. That two level programming brings us the delay. Okay, that's uh, that uh, that will add the delay to the system. That's why systems will be manufactured, but they may not have uh, efficiency in terms of uh, speed. That's why we go for another device that is programmable array logic. In the programmable array logic, there is only one plane is programmable that is end plane is programmable but this is having drawback while what is that is uh, logic plane structure grows rapidly with the number of inputs if the number of inputs are increases 
that uh, area required for implementing the system grows rapidly like, that means more area is required if there are more number of inputs in a design now these are the devices available under pls and there are uh, means uh, drawbacks of these devices that's why we will be moving towards field programmable gateway manufactured by considering all these drawbacks and then uh, release to the market now let us look at the field programmable gate array before going to the field program gate array let us look at what is field programmable gate array now this field programmable gate array is introduced to the market in 1985 and this is a reprogrammable chip which contains millions of logic gates that are internally connected together to build complex digital circuitry that means whatever circuit you wanted to whatever we wanted to develop that can be reprogrammed on the reprogrammable area of FCA. That is the beauty of this FCA. Then it can be used for implementing different functionalities in a short period of time. That means this reprogramming takes only hardly one or two minutes. That's why we can uh, release the products into the market as quick as possible. Okay, that is the uh, another advantage of this field programmable gate array. Now let us look at the need of field programmable gate array. Now if you look at there are uh, two device means two techniques I kept here. That is I think application specific integrated circuit this actually can be manufactured by using full custom design as well semi custom design and field programmable gate array is readily available device that is off the self device that means the device is available and we have to reprogram the device according to the functionality of a system now if you look at the ASIC, it will have high performance lower power consumption as well low cost in higher volumes that means if you want to go for manufacturing one lakh devices then this is best solution as it is best solution and it will have good performance everything is fine but whenever you come to the field programmable gate array this is of the self device and it will uh, have low cost development why because here as i said semi custom and full custom both are having high nre cost but here in full uh, field program gate array there is no nre cost there is there will be nre cost but that will be very minimal that is low development cost and start time to market as i said we can uh, release the product into the market as early as possible why because device is of the self device and we can write the hdl program and then we can download we can configure the fca according to the system behavior and then we can release that into the market that is that takes hardly means one week or at most one month that's why we can say this is uh, short time to market that is one of the advantages of this FCA as well recomparability as I said same device that means same FCA, FCA device can be used for implementing multiple systems that means we can uh, use this device for adder as well multiplier and then some decoding decoder as well many more can be implemented on the same device that's why we can call this is the beauty of this FCA and that can be used for designing any applications instantly. Okay. Now this is recomparability of FCA is the biggest advantage of VLSI industry. Now coming to the architecture of FCA. Now if you look at this uh, architecture of FCA, it is having 2D shape. Here in this uh, 2D, there are uh, configurable logic blocks. You can you can see here array of configurable logic blocks. This array of configurable logic blocks will have lookup tables internally. That means uh, lookup table is having the behavior of any digital system. That means we can reprogram these CLBs based on the behavior of the digital system. Then uh, I/O blocks. Now here you could see the I/O blocks. This is I/O block, and it will have the physical connection to the external world not me see as we should see the pin and this can be used for connecting this device with the external devices as well internally you could see this some pins these pins are used for connecting uh, internal clbs then uh, block ram this is the ram used for storing the bit files bit files are the files which are used for reprogram these clbs we can use this block ram for storing that bit files now this is the structure of architecture structure of FCA and it will have CLBs and IO blocks and RAM. Now look at look at this 
diagram here you could see the lookup table as i said there will be a lookup table inside the configurable logic block here you could see the configurable logic blocks there are many configurable logic blocks and this number of configurable logic blocks varies from device to device but here the behavior of configurable logic block is constant in all the devices now each configurable logic block will have the lookup table okay this is now if you look at this lookup table this is the lookup table of a configurable logic block and this lookup table will hold the table look at this this is the table what is the data stored in this lookup table is this one this lookup table will have four inputs one output now these four inputs will have the 16 combinations and for all 16 combinations there are output now this is the behavior stored in the lookup table and that behavior is described as nand gate now this is the nand gate is designed by using this lookup that means lookup table will have the behavior of the nand gate whenever we want to configure the nand gate we can configure this lookup table such that this lookup table itself acts as nand gate now if you look at another diagram this is another diagram here the same lookup table can be used for designing the complex circuit now you look at this circuit and this circuit here in this circuit this is first circuit in this circuit we have only one nand gate but here in this circuit we have multiple nand gates but these multiple nand gates also designed by using single lookup table that is based on the behavior of the lookup table we can uh, design the so that means we have to configure the lookup table behavior to design the logic gates now these are the logic gates designed by the behavior of logic uh, lookup tables now this is the beauty of uh, fga that the fga is having lookup tables and we can reprogram the lookup table so that that lookup table shows the various behavior this is the best example here same lookup table if you configure this lookup table with this data that acts as nand gate if you configure this lookup table with this data that acts as this complex circuit now like this we can reprogram the fegs for any behavior that's why widely we can use nowadays we can use fegs to design systems rapidly now this is a switch matrix as i said there are uh, many configurable log configurable logic blocks in FGA. now these are configurable logic blocks need to be interconnected if you want to design complex system that complex system require many configurable logic blocks why well, because that complex systems will have very big architecture and that very big architecture cannot be fit in a single configurable logic block that's why we have to use multiple logic blocks if you use multiple configurable logic blocks there is need of providing interconnection between them now here if you look at this now this is the configurable logic block means around the configurable logic blocks there is switch mat switching and interconnecting area now this is the interconnecting area that I means here if you look at the architecture here these are the interconnecting areas here there will be a switch box we can use that switch box to provide the interconnection between two functional blocks two configurable logic blocks now this is how we can switch it means this is the switch box here we have the connecting lines from here to here and here to here now with the help of the switch box we can provide the interconnection between two clbs here each switch will have six combinations that means from here to here here to here here to here as well here to here in total there are six combinations are possible in each switch now let us look at another beauty of fail programmable gate array now this is uh, another beauty that is parallel computing we can uh, perform the parallel computation by using this field programmable gate arrays now if you look at this example here i give uh, there is another uh, one algorithm that is d equal to a minus b e equal to c plus f g equal to d by e this is the algorithm now let us look at the implementation of this algorithm by using software solution as well hardware solution hardware solution means implementing by using a fgia software solution means implementing the same algorithm by using microprocessor microcontroller if you want to implement this algorithm by using microprocessor microcontroller there is a need of writing the program in a higher level language or assembly level language if you look at this we will have there are steps for each if i want to implement d equal to a minus b we have to load first a then b and then perform the subtraction operation and then store the result into d and then load c f and then perform the addition operation store the result in into a again load e d and then perform the this is these are the sequence of steps required 
to implement this algorithm. Now, so, so, uh, all, uh, all of us know that microprocessor is computing element that compute the data sequential. That means one instruction, one step by another step. Okay. Now here there are uh, sequence of steps. These all sequence of steps can be executed in order to execute the algorithm. Now, for executing these all steps, microprocessor takes 12 clock cycles. But if you go for implementing the same by using FCA, since if you look at this uh, algorithm, here D and E both are independent. That means D is depending on A and B, E is depending on C and F. C, E is not at all depending on A, B, and D is not at all depending on C and F. That's why we can say these two are independent. So that we can perform both separately. That means parallelly we can compute the D as well E. But if you look at the D, uh, G, G is depends on D and E. That means uh, G is not independent. G is depend on E, D and E. That's why we cannot perform G parallelly. But here we can perform D and E parallelly. That can be done by using this FEGA. Here, as I said, FEGA will have CLBs, controllable logic blocks. And those controllable logic blocks are kept in array fashion. Now, each Control logic block can be used for one system behavior in such a way that we can use any two control logic blocks to perform to compute the D as well E. Now let us uh, take one control logic block is used for D, computation of D. Another logic block is used for computation of E. Now both can be done parallelly. Why? Because there are many arrays available in FEGA core area and we can use individual CLBs for individual operations with the help of that behavior we have done D and E competition parallelly and then we perform the or we compute the G. Now here if you look at this process the only two clock cycles is required one clock cycle for performing D and E another clock cycle for performing G. Total two clock pulses is enough. But if you look at this here uh, FEGA takes only two clock two clock cycles but Microprocessor or microcontroller takes total 12 clock cycle. That is software implementations or software solution takes 12 clock cycles, but hardware solution takes only two clock cycles. This is the biggest advantage of FEGA. So if you look at this, now here uh, the speed of the system is enhanced by six times. Now that again depends on the behavior of the algorithm. If behavior of the algorithm is more non dependent, then we can go for implement you can go for enhancing the speed now let us look at now these are the behavior these are the beauties of uh, field program get array and we can uh, use this field program get array for implementing digital systems effectively now let us see the design flow of implementing digital systems now if you look at this there are a sequence of steps to implement any digital system on FGA. now here first step is rtl design in rtl design what we do is we describe the system behavior in terms of hardware description language there are uh, the hardware description higher level languages we can use hardware description languages to keep the behavior of a system in terms of english letters that means that is what rtl rtl means register transfer level now this register transfer level can be created by using hdl language and this hdl language is used for de describing the behavior of any system now in this first step what we do is we write the hdl program for the system behavior and then we go for verifying the rtl design with the help of some verification tools here in under the logic verification process what do we do is we verify the system behavior by generating various test patterns later on i will show you how to verify the system design by using hdl and then we go for the synthesis process. In synthesis process, what happens is that generates the technology map gate level netlist. That means we can get the gate level diagram, a gate level netlist for the system described in HDL language. Here we have described the system in HDL language that is given as input to the synthesis process. That synthesis process generates the gate level netlist for the RTL code or RTL design. And then we can uh, send that synthesis, synthesized 
RTL netlist for place and routing. In place and routing, what do we do is we place all the gates of a netlist in the configurable area of FEZ and then we provide the routing between them. That means we can place all the gates in configurable logic blocks of FECA and then we provide the routing between the configurable logic blocks. After placing the gates and then providing the routing between the configurable logic blocks, we go for again verifying the design and then testing the timing analysis. That means there are systems are time bounded. That's why we have to verify the timing of each system. That's why here we have to verify the behavior of the system as well timing analysis also we need to perform that is what design validation and then timing analysis after the completion of design validation and timing analysis we go for generating bit file that is what bit file generation in bit file generation what we do is we can generate hexadecimal code hexadecimal code that means uh, we can generate the binary file for the place and routing of logic gates under the FECA and then we can configure FECA after completion of bit file generation we use that bit file uh, bit file to configure the FECA under FECA configuration we download the binary file into the memory of FECA as I said there is block RAM in FECA we can uh, download this config this bit file into the memory of FEZ and then we can configure the FEZ in the sense we can configure the configurable logic blocks and then provide the interconnection between those configurable blocks. After completion of this FEZ configuration, that FEZ device itself acts as the system. That means whatever system we have described in RTL or in HDL code, the same behavior will be imitated by the device, that is FEZ device. Now let us uh, take one example, uh, whatever design process I have explained. Here we have, we can follow total seven steps. That is first RTL design, then logic verification, synthesis, the place and route, design validation, and then timing analysis, bit file generation, and then FCA configuration. These are the sequence steps what we follow. Now let us uh, look at an example of designing digital systems on FCA. Now if you look at this example, here I, have, I am taking adder, adder as the example. Now, in order to perform the addition, we need adder. Now, let us look at the sequence of steps. What do we need to follow to design the adder on FECA? Now, first of all, we have to capture the specifications. Specification in the sense, number of inputs, number of outputs. Here, first I am designing one bit adder. We can call that one bit adder as full adder. We already know that full adder performs the one bit addition. That's why. I uh, means I am designing one bit adder first and then we can use this one bit adder to design uh, to perform multiple addition okay now let us look at this full adder now this full adder will have a b c as inputs then s and c out as output that s means sum and c out as carry out now here a b are the inputs and c is previous carry. anyway this full adder will have total three inputs and two outputs now behavior of this full adder is kept in the form of Truth table. If you look at this, this is the truth table of full adder. That means whenever both, um, whenever all the inputs are 0, 0, sum is 0, C out is 0. Whenever 0, 0, 1, then sum is 1, C out is 0. That is sum, yeah, yes means sum, C out means carry out. Now this is the behavior of this full adder. Behavior of this full adder is kept in the form of truth table. Like this, we can um, describe the behavior of any system in terms of full adder. But here in this slide just I am showing the behavior of the full adder in terms of truth table. Now we can use this truth table to design boolean equation. Now we can look at this. There is boolean equation. This is the boolean equation for sum. This is the boolean equation for carry. Here SC is sum. The sum is equal to this one. Why? Well, because here if you look at this, these are the combinations of input A, B, C. These are the inputs and sum and carry are outputs. Now we can consider the combinations wherever SC is 1. Now SC is 1 for four common one two three four these are the four combinations where s is one so that i have taken four min terms and then these four min terms will give us the behavior of the full adder now this is the boolean equation of sum and this is the boolean equation of carry out now 
if you look at this this boolean equation is having many min terms that's why we have to reduce this min term number of min terms now this is look at this this is the boolean equation that is minimal boolean equation for the sum and this is the minimal boolean equation for c out now if you look at this xr is the xr gate and is and gate r is r gate here we cannot write that and gate that's why i have written here xr in english letters okay now this is the minimal boolean equation of sum and carry and which describes the behavior of the full adder now we take these equations and we can describe the rtl design that means this is the rtl design that is hdl program that hdl means here hardware description language hardware description language of full adder now if you look at this entity always this hardware description language will have two parts one is entity another one is architecture now if you look at this this is the part entity part here we can specify all physical signals physical signals means what are the inputs what are the outputs here a b c in are the inputs s and c out are the output that's why here you can see under the entity we have port that means these are the ports a b c are the ports of size of type input here you could see in in indicates the input b also in c also input that's why these are all are input and s is out that's why here i kept this is s these are the keywords of hdl what we need to use to describe the direction of the signals now since s is output signal that's why i have written here out then c out also out this is the entity part this entity use the physical structure of a system now this architecture under the architecture we can describe the behavior of a system now if you look at this under the architecture i have implemented those expressions actually in previous step we have expressions that is boolean equations for sum and c out same sum and c out are implemented now here this is the symbol what we use to assign we can call this as assignment operator we can use this assignment operator to assign the behavior of left hand side equation to the the right side equation to the left hand side okay now a x r b x r c x a x r b x r c in is the boolean equation of sum that's why this is assigned to s similarly this is the boolean equation of c out now that is assigned to c out now this is the behavior of adder now this whole represents the structure of full adder here entity will give the physical structure and r structure gives the behavior of full adder now this is the rtl design of full adder now this rtl design is given to the synthesis as i said there is synthesis here after designing rtl we can give that rtl code to the synthesis that synthesis process will generate the gate level diagram if you look at this this is the gate level diagram here we have our xr gates now these are the xr two xr gates forms as sum since here yes that is sum is equal to a x r b x r c in now same here also two input x r gates are used there are two two input x r gates used as the behavior of sum similarly c out now this is the gate level diagram now here in this gate level diagram we have two x r gates two and gates one r gate now these gates will be placed that is placed and routing in this step placed and routing we can place these gate behavior in clbs in the form of lookup tables and then provide the routing between the clbs and then generate the bit file after generating the bit file we download that bit file into the field program with gate array that is fega then fega acts as full adder now that is the process here i have shown you uh, shown you only first three steps after steps need to be done on simulation tool here i am I mean, so, in order to demonstrate those we need the tool but we don't have that much facility to demonstrate with the help of tool that's why just i am giving you overview after this we go for placing these gates in fega area and then provide the routing then generate the bit file finally we can download that bit file into the fega device and then fega fega device acts as full adder that is how we can implement any decision system on fega now if you would like to verify the behavior of 
the system which is implemented on FEGA, we can read the test bench. Now look at this. This is the test bench. Now in this test bench, this is the just structure what we need to follow for creating the test bench. In this test bench, we have the test patterns. Test patterns means since we have there are eight uh, three inputs, those three inputs generates eight test patterns. If you look at this, these are the eight test patterns. What we need to follow. These test patterns should be given as input, and then we can verify the output. That will be done by using simulation tool. Now, this is the behavior of the simulation tool. Now, here, if you look at this, A, B, C. Whenever A is 1, B is 0, C is 0. Sum is 1, C out is 0. Now, same is there in the lookup table also. If you look at this lookup table, same behavior is described. This is the behavior described by us. Now, this is the behavior simulated by using the simulation tool after implementing the design and FHCA. Now, let us go for extending the same concept for design for adding multiple bits. Now, whatever full ladder we have studied or we have seen, that is for adding one bit data. Now, if you want to add multiple bit data, then there is a need of interconnecting those full ladders together. Now this is the diagram. This is the diagram. Here we can add four bit. That's why we can call this as four bit adder. Now here we can use each full adder to add one bit data. So that since there is need of adding four bit, four bits, there is full four full adders interconnected together. Now this is the four bit adder. In the same way, we can go for implementing. 8 bit adder, 16 bit adder, 64 bit adder, any number of adders we can develop. But method is the same. But here, what we have done is already there is full array design is available, and we already made it, and we utilize that for constructing higher bit adders. Now, this is the again HDL description what we need to follow to interconnect multiple 4 bit adders. Now, if you look at this, here each full adder will take only one bit data and generate the sum and carry and that's carry which is generated at the lower this is lsb this is msb at the lsb level that will be given as input to the next full adder that's why this interconnection is in such in such a way that c1 is given as input to second full adder then c2 is given as input to third full adder then c3 as input to fourth full adder now this is how here if you look at this carry is rippling if you look at the four bit addition operation binary addition operation there also there is carry rippled from lsb to msb here also same behavior is happening now this is how we design any bit adder now let us have the overview of various xilinx devices available from xilinx company here if you look at this diagram here i kept the four families of fgs that is pattern 6 arctic 7 Kintex 7, Vertex 7, and Jink. Now, if you look at these devices, these devices are having same structure, what I have shown you, but here only difference is number of CLBs. If you look at this Spartan 6, number of CLBs are 150 kilo. Here, number of CLBs varies from 6K to 218. That means there are many variants in Arctic 7. Depending upon the variant, we can have number of CLBs, but Maximum is 218 kilo. But if you look at the Kintex 7, we have around 1451 K. That is 1451 kilo look, uh, CLBs in this Kintex. In uh, uh, Vertex, 5540 kilo. That is maximum count. In Jink family, it is a heterogeneous architecture. In Jink, we have the FEGA interconnected with ARM processor. There is ARM software processor that is interconnected with FEGA. That means both are interconnected together. And we can call such type of architectures as heterogeneous architectures. Now, Jink is the heterogeneous architecture. Now, these all devices are manufactured by using 28 nanometer technology. I hope all of us know what is the technology. Here, this technology, 28 nanometer, indicates that the length between source and drain of a FET transistor. As I said in the very first slide, we can um, use devices to design the dev devices sorry we can use transistor devices to design complex systems now here this 29 nanometer indicates the distance between source and drain of 
the fat transistor. Now, similarly, after nowadays they have released some more devices that is RTX and as well Kintex with high speed and low area, and those devices will have 16 nanometer that is under the name Ultra Vertex Ultra Vertex. Ultra. These are having 16 nanometer technology, that means these devices follow 16 nanometer technology to this. Now, these are the future applications. Now, since uh, we have seen the behavior of FEGA and the architecture of FEGA and the uh, various advantages of FEGA, we can utilize these FEGAs effectively for future generation systems, such as 5G wireless technology and embedded vision, industrial IoTs, cloud computing. These are the emerging applications what we are looking for in near future. As well, we can easily adapt field programmable gate arrays to design all these applications. This is, and we follow whatever sequence of steps we studied for implementing digital system. Same sequence of steps can be implemented or followed for implementing all these applications also. But these are the complex applications, so we need to put more concentration while designing these real-time applications and FEG. That's it. I hope you all enjoyed this session. Thank you. Any queries, please? Thank you, sir. We will give the audience uh, one minute. Yes, sir. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. All right, now there are no questions. In case I receive my email, I'll forward to you, sir. Yes, oh, sure, sir. Oh, thank, thank you, thank you sir. Thank you very much for providing these facilities, sir. Yes.